Hey guys, Sean McCauley with Cloud Defensive, and today we're going back to cable control. Tons of questions keep coming in about how we can get the gun set up, uh, you know, what's the kind of the best practices and, and how, you know, what kind of cable management options are available with this. Uh, and this is kind of on us because we made a system that had never been made before, right? So uh, this is just kind of an educational tool for you, hopefully. Uh, the first thing we need to talk about is kind of the genesis of the cable management and why we did it. Uh, for a lot of years, uh, more traditional setups have been in place and the wires have just kind of been something you've had to deal with. And that's okay uh, to a degree. We just wanted to fix that. And we wanted to give you solutions that, that you might not have otherwise had. When we made the remote, uh, we did so with that in mind, and I wanted to give you the ability to contain your cable and route your cable in, in a way that was gonna lead to less cable exposure. Uh, and a little side note, with most weapon lights, uh, the cable exposure is a major failure point, as is the junction between the remote switch and the, the flashlight at the tail cap, right? So when we designed this thing, we did a couple of things very specifically. Uh, before we even get to the remote, uh, we oriented the tail cap and made it uh, basically clockable, right? So you can, you can kind of clock that. And one of these best practices that you need to be thinking about before you even worry about your remote uh, is spin your tail cap housing around and or make sure it's oriented. You can bring the camera in here tight, hopefully. Uh, so that way uh, your cable is exiting inboard towards the rail. Uh, and if, if you look all the way around this, this little 300 build, there's no cable exposure when it's all put together. The only cable you see once it's all in the housing is, uh, I'm gonna round up and call that uh, maybe an inch of cable that's kind of tucked between the light and the, and the switch. Zero exposure, it can't snag, it can't break, it can't wear in, it, it, it just lives there. So if you set these things up right, you're gonna have the smallest amount of uh, cable exposure possible. And that's gonna increase the life of your remote switch, it's gonna increase the reliability of your system. It's gonna give you less headaches, um, life is good. But to do that, you still gotta get her set up. So now we're coming kind of full circle here into the cable management. A Couple of things about this that a lot of guys don't know. Um, first of all, we gave you options. So if you come in tight again here, there's actually a cable channel all the way through. So if just pretend the, the wrench here is your cable, it actually lays in there flush and that then sandwiches to your rail and it allows you to run the cable uh, in a number of different capacities. So side channel, your side plates have those channels, just first tidbit. Secondly, uh, it's not just a matter of uh, moving that cable out the bottom and then going straight towards the light. I think this is one thing we see with a lot of SBRs and uh, pistol builds, shorter builds, uh, especially if you're running uh, lasers up in front, you're typically running a switch right behind it. Uh, if you're doing that, you don't need all that cable length. So then <laughs> the question becomes, how do you deal with it, right? couple of ways and this is where there's best practices and then there's just realities all these setups are a little bit different so your order of events might change a little bit uh, good rule of thumb if you have a laser place that on the gun and then work the light and the mount around the laser get that optimized make sure everything's good there once you know exactly where that's gonna be uh, kind of I would recommend putting the tail cap cartridge in orienting the switch just to kind of see how much cable you've got to deal with and this is a little frustrating at times, uh, but it's something that you just do once, right? Once it's set up, it's set up and then you're good. So I'm willing to, to put in a little bit more time up front to make sure it's optimal. And once you kind of have an idea of how much cable you've got to run, that's gonna tell you, you know, which of the cable channels to use, which side to exit on, which kind of brings us to the next uh, topic here. It's a little maybe counterintuitive for most people. So if you're looking straight down on top of this gun, for example, um, I'm a right-handed guy, right-handed shooter. So I'm running my, my light on my right, right hand side, strong side, and then my support hand comes up. So uh, most people would put the switch on and think, okay, well, I'm gonna run the switch, uh, switch wire, sorry, towards the light. Well, yes, but no, you don't have to do that, uh, especially if you're trying to contain some extra cable. So what we've got now is the ability, we just call them pass-throughs, uh, but if you look underneath the switch, you're gonna see the cable exits there and it can come out either side and it sits inside the Picatinny channel of your choice. Uh, and then you can actually run the switch cable underneath the screws through those channels, which is kind of a sneaky thing that, that we did there. Uh, so I've actually kind of got this one preset just so the, the masses can see here. Uh, and this, this cable you're gonna notice has some memory to it. So 
once you kind of get it positioned, it doesn't really want to move too much. That actually makes setup a little bit easier. Uh, so all I did here, for in this instance, because it's appropriate for this build, was I exited the cable from the bottom, I came out the left side, I ran up this way, across through that channel as you can see, and then it comes back, and this is where I'm starting to leverage the early exit feature, as we termed it, right there. So it allows us to turn that cable in, just like you see here, goes back, and then exits out. And what I'm doing there is I'm basically just consuming excess cable with the intent of consuming as much of it as possible inside the, the finished switch assembly. So there's just minimal excess cable. And then you just tuck whatever is left over inboard and you're good to go. So uh, just to actually do this for you guys, again, it's positioned there. And yeah, you're gonna have to work that cable a little bit to get it in place, that's okay. Uh, another pro tip here, press your uh, nuts right into the, the side plate there, get those set in position and then that's just easier. And then all you're gonna do is come in and kind of manipulate that a little bit, just like that. So I'm gonna hold it here and we can, uh, we can show you. From this position, you're able to see that, that uh, here, I'll use a little pointer for you. The cable exits right in the middle of that switch. It comes through this Picatinny slot. Then I ran it forward and then I turned back towards the light and you can see it there. It's gonna disappear in a minute when I put that other side plate on. And then, if I get fancy here, like I said, I ran it back, so I consumed another inch and actually more of cable. And then what's left is just right there, and it's got zero exposure to the outside world. You cannot snag it, it's just gonna live there forever. So, super easy. Um, and then to actually finish the install, all you're gonna do is get your other side plate. And again, you, just make sure you're not pinching the cable. If you come in this way and look now, you'll be able to see, <laughs> the only cable you can see now is at the corner there on this side, which is pretty cool. And it crosses over and uh, again, you can't see much there. So you've got minimal exposure. Just push those screws in. It's a uh, 7 64th. Some guys are asking what size. There's your size, 7 64th. And on the torque, one other pro tip, do not over torque this. This is a uh, proprietary glass filled nylon switch housing. Super strong, super hard, uh, but imagine you can break it uh, if you over torque it. So don't over torque it. Um, I would recommend about 15 inch pounds, not foot pounds, don't even think about it, inch pounds. Uh, Again, best practices would be to use that torque wrench. I've done this so many times, I'll tell you right now, uh, I just know what that feels like. And we're good right there, and she's put together. So, again, setup is gonna dictate order of events to some degree, but highly recommend place the light first, place the switch approximately where you want it. I mean, this is my setup, so I mean, this is right where that lives. I know that's what it's gonna be. I'm shooting like that but how far fore and aft that switch is on the rail is gonna dictate a lot about how you're gonna run that, that cable. So uh, there you have it, that's, uh, that's the rain switch. All, uh, all pretty now, put together, and it'll serve you well.